Hi, welcome to Dreams Recycle podcast hosted by me, Tiffany Bevelin. And today it's super exciting for me. I'm having a non-divorcee in my show. Who would have thought it? But um, I was very fortunate to connect with John Daly, who is a TV host, author, and a pioneer in reality TV and iPhone production. And we're going to talk about him uh, um, to him about some more interesting things today, about careers and recycling your life in different ways uh, when you're divorced and some other cool stuff. So hi, John, how are you? Tiffany, doing great. Thanks for having me on and, and thanks for, for clarifying so that my wife knows that I am not a divorcee. <laughs> no, I know. Yes, we don't want that. And <laughs> congratulations, by the way. Maybe we'll talk about that a bit later. Thank you. You have been married a very long time by today's standards. and we 30, 32 say, years, yeah. 32 years is amazing. So uh, before we get into the career stuff, give me the three best tips you can uh, give to people who are married, how to stay married. Uh, one I would say is if you're about to get angry and lash out, hold your tongue, think about it for a while. Uh, the second thing is uh, make sure you both have your space. Um, I'm fortunate that my wife is someone like me who likes to have um, away time, downtime. She likes to be on her own. Uh, uh -huh. And just and I would say third, just make sure you have you have friends too because it's you know that's. You know, if you're, I think if, if it's a marriage where you're just constantly with each other all the time, mm -hmm. she's going to get bored of you and, you know, probably vice versa too. So, but uh, I would say those, those are probably the three best. It's just, sometimes you can say stuff that to me, that's the big thing. And I, being of Irish descent, I, you know, I can have, a, <laughs> you know, I keep, uh, I, tr I try to always, when I get angry, I just try to eh, settle down, just, you know, keep mm -hmm. them no, and that's a good thing to remember, right? Be respectful, use kind words, and if you can't, maybe remove yourself to another room. But you touched on something that I'm a big proponent of. Um, as I was telling you earlier, I've spoke to 6,000 divorcees, and one of the things that comes up a lot is losing interest in people because people become less interesting than when you mm -hmm. dated them. And so you touched on what we say, you know, having your own interests, having your own friends, staying interesting. I feel like when you get married, you owe it to yourself, but you owe it to your spouse too, to not become somebody who is uninteresting and you're sat on the sofa every night and you're, you have nothing to say and nothing to contribute to the partnership. And um, unfortunately, we hear that a lot with stay-at-home moms, which is what I was. Mm -hmm. And um, You know, you don't do it by choice, but, you know, your only kind of thing to talk about is if you're you know, baby is teething or, you know, what's going on at PTA. And while your husband or your wife, depends off your stay-at-home mom or dad, is out in the real world, you know, having exciting life and becoming more interesting and you are becoming less interesting. It's true. No, very, very true. And uh, I think it's, you know, marriage shouldn't be the end. Marriage should be the beginning where, you know, you're, not only developing, but you're also investigating and exploring life. Right. And you should be doing that together, right? Like together and separately. And I think that is, like you said, that definitely is a good thing. So thank you for that tip, especially when I'm getting married this year. So yay. Congratulations. Thank you. Maybe, maybe this time I'll do a better job. Who knows? <laughs> um, so anyway, so I was a stay at home mom. Everyone knows my story. It's everywhere. I was a stay at home mom. I was unemployable. Okay. So, so tell me a bit about your, your impression of um, careers and recycling your careers. I mean, I know enough about you to know that you've been a host of many reality shows and you kind of recycled that into something new and exciting that maybe we could all use in our daily life or in business, which is iPhone production. Well, um, just, just to go back, because I, I was kind of in a similar situation to you. I, I, I didn't get divorced, but uh, certainly the the different jobs and industries that I was in um, kind of said goodbye to me. Uh, I was in the news business and then I eventually moved over to doing reality TV as a host. And then the the show I did, Real TV, was kind of the, even though it was one of the first to do it, it was also one of the last ones to kind of leave. And they, you, you, the reality TV you get now is the Kardashians mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. And that wasn't me. I was, a, I was kind of a host, a news anchor who was introducing different things. I did it on Home and Garden Television for a show there too. But uh -huh. they stopped looking for, for those type hosts. So they weren't looking for the guy who was 
you know, credible, clean cut, who, you know, just delivered things. Uh, they were looking for more drama, people yeah. involved. Salacious. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, I knew, I knew my, my days in, in Hollywood or LA were done unless I went back to the news business. And I really didn't want to go back to the news business. I had, I had done that. I had written a book on the media and media bias. So mm-hmm. I knew I needed to go out and I wanted to be on my own. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to do my own thing. So, so I, I started just kind of exploring how to, uh, how to get out there and how to do different things and to use my talents. Now, I can't say I've been like, wow, successful, but I've certainly made myself happy in, in doing the work that I'm doing. I was fortunate that I found a business partner. Her name is Susan Anzalone. She's on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast. Hi, Susan. And so, yeah, <laughs> you can say hello to her. And... Um, we, so we we realized we ended up working together on a project, and we realized that you know we like to create content, and we worked really well together. So we ended up um, creating this company called Now TV. So what we try to do is create content for companies because that's what we enjoy doing. So mm-hmm. what, I, what we don't enjoy doing, even though I have to do it a lot, is social media marketing. So I would say okay. to somebody who we work with. We don't do your social media marketing. You need to find somebody else or we'll find somebody else to do this. So I think right. the thing was to find the things that make you happy. I get up every morning. I enjoy putting together these shows. I enjoy working with the companies we work with because they're innovative. They're cutting edge. Um, they're, they're looking to make people either healthy or wealthy mm-hmm. or happy. Right. So, um, so I made sure that, you know, that I was happy in, in what I would do. And, you know, for a short while, I, I worked in the um, wealth management field. Right. Master. Absolutely awful. It was the worst <laughs> thing I ever did. I hated it. Even though I love the economics of it, I, I love learning uh, different things about finance, going deeper in, into it than I normally would as, a, as an economics reporter. And, um, and then I also went back to being a news anchor. And that was just, it was horrible because the news business had changed drastically and it was totally different and at the same time too, totally the same of what I wrote about in my book about media bias. So Mm -hmm. I knew I needed to go and I needed to work for myself and I needed to do the things that were much more interesting to me. And what what I've really been been finding as I'm working with a lot of these companies is jobs jobs are getting... uh, they're less and less. And I, I think there's two things that are going on out there. And this is through a lot of research that I'm doing mm-hmm. is that we, we, we have an aging society, especially in the United States. It's the same in Europe. It's also the same in Japan, even in China and Russia as well. And right. we have an aging society. And what you're seeing in the United States is a lot of the, a lot of the baby boomers who are not, who are now retiring or who are retired are taking up a lot of the resources of the government. And what we don't realize is that, and I'm a baby boomer, right. in about five to 10 years, we're going to zap that federal government. And that's going to take away from a lot of economic innovation. The second thing is technology. Technology is actually taking away jobs. And we're seeing this with a lot of different, like e-commerce. People yeah. aren't going to the malls. Two hundred. Yeah, I saw malls. I- I saw like some crazy robot robots the other day packing up something like doing a much better job than any human could have possibly done of it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and this year alone, 250 malls are closing in the U.S. Wow. Alone, just in the U.S. That's about 5 million jobs gone. So what you're beginning to see is technology is beginning to, uh, it's taking away jobs more than it's actually creating jobs. Mm-hmm. And so we we're, we're, are, are certainly our lawmakers are not are not figuring that out yet. So we're not paying attention to those problems. So we're not getting the solutions, but we have to have to look at it. And I I think one of the ways is to, is to take a lot of the innovation um, that you see out there. So one of the things we did with our book, and again, it's called the TV studio in your hand, which I've read it and it's awesome. Thank you you so much. Thank you so much. And it's quick read too, which is, which is, which is good. Well, Um, yeah, yeah. Very practical. Very, very good. And uh, you can use it not only for your vacation videos, Mm -hmm. but you can also use it for, uh, for, you know, creating news for your, for your sole proprietor business or for your company that you're working with or creating a little niche for yourself where you can create videos for, for your company or for your neighborhood. You could create a newscast for, let's say you live in an apartment building, you create a newscast for them or for your neighborhood. Yeah. So there's just a lot of different things you can do with the technology out there. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of people get stuck in, okay, this is my job. I lost my job. My job's gone. I don't have to, 
you got to get out of that mindset and you got to start looking and seeing what's available out there. And unfortunately, it's tough too, because financially you're like, oh, I'm at the wit's end here. The good news is the technology sometimes makes it so it's cheaper for you to do it as well. No, and I agree. And as I said, you know, when I couldn't find a job after my divorce from being a stay-at-home mom, I mean, I think you are. You have those two halves of your brain going at the same time. One half is like practical and like, oh God, I'll go work at wherever just to make, you know, in Florida minimum wages like eight fifty. Yeah. So, so you go do that because you want to, you know, do whatever. But it's really, you know, I tell people all the time that you've got to do what you've got to do clearly, but you should really be following your passion. And if you can try and figure out a way, like you said, whether it's start your own business or e-commerce or like I did my own online company or you did your own handheld reality TV show, um, you know, to get up every day and feel that you were productive and you're doing something that makes you happy. I feel you can't put a price on that. And, uh, and that's really, you know, one of the upsides to me about divorce. It really does give you an opportunity to recycle your life from a blank page. You know, you didn't want that blank page, but you got that blank page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, you probably didn't want your reality show to end real TV, but when it did, it gave you kind of forced you to have that blank page where you could start all over again and make it however you wanted to. Yeah. And the, the other thing is, is that, you know, you have, you, like you said, you have to go take that minimum wage job. I mean, I've actually taken bartender jobs just to, just to kind of keep things, mm -hmm. keep things flowing, which I don't mind doing. I don't, I don't care. Oh, wow. A TV host, she's a bartender. I don't, I don't care about that. That doesn't help you get bigger tips. Well, I, well, here's the thing is that I am a graduate of Harvard bartending Bar school. Oh, so, <laughs> so I demand <laughs> higher tips. So, yeah. I hope you do, but that's, is that true or are you teasing me? Yeah, actually, it is true. When, when, uh, when we were leaving Boston after the uh, news anchor job that I, I didn't like and I was starting my own business, we were moving down to, uh, to North Carolina here. Uh, my wife happened to find on Groupon, there was a discount for the Harvard Bartending School. Oh, and so you actually go to Harvard and they've got this great bar and there is a Harvard Bartending School that's, that's right there. And I had... Many, many years ago when I, when I was starting out as a freelance writer and I was a newspaper reporter, I took a very intensive week-long course in Connecticut that required, you know, not only had to pass a test, you had to get certified. It was, and it was a brutal course. And I took it and I passed it. And I never used it except, you know, at home. So <laughs> I've always been, which, you know, ties into the TV show. I love mixing drinks. I love wine. I love the whole science behind everything. So I went and I took this course. Right. And my wife got for me. So I spent a full day and it was eight hours. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to have fun. I guess I'm going to be dancing around. Oh, yeah, it'd be really cool. The first four hours was a TIPS course. And TIPS, ah. I can't remember what it stands for, but TIPS is what the insurance industry requires bars to have all their bartenders go through so you can learn how to turn somebody off when they've been drinking too much so you don't have drunk. Oh, okay. It's a Let liability see. course. Yeah. So I go four hours doing this liability. It was like, it was like going to law school. <laughs> and so I had to go and I had to take the test and I, I passed it. I actually, and so, and I'm, I'm pretty good, I guess, as far as taking tests. And I, I had known a lot of the stuff. Well, you went to and, Harvard. You should be good, right? Well, I went to Harvard <laughs> bartending school. Yes. You have to, you have to use that pause and then say bartending school. Yeah. And then, uh, so in the next four hours we're, um, uh, we're, we're mixing drinks, but but for me, I, I, I think as long as you're moving, I mean, I, I'm one of those people, I don't have those, okay, I've got to be this, and mm -hmm. if I am this, then I'm going to be happy. Me, it's kind of like, uh, I, I love exploring and finding what is out there and what ties into my skills and, and, and how can I help people. And yeah. that's, that to me is the, is the most important thing. And one of the things that I'm, I'm really beginning to see, and, and a lot of people are, are kind of aghast when I say this, is that I think multi-level marketing or network marketing is going to be the business model of the future. Do you really think that? Because I, I like when people try and sell me things, which is every single day on mm -hmm. multi-level <laughs> multi marketing, like Absolutely. I have this horrible vision of like, Absolutely. My mom at some Tupperware party, like, I don't know, that's just kind of like exactly what I go to. But I, I think 
that you may well be right because I see a lot of people doing very, very well in this. Field. It is. And it's, it, it's changing in, in a couple of ways. One, the laws in the, especially in the United States are getting tougher on it. So mm-hmm. you can't have, because what you're seeing is you're seeing 95% of the companies fail and the people who don't get in on time, they get, they get screwed financially. And mm-hmm. some people do make a lot of money. The other thing they're, they're trying to set up stuff. So it's more, you become more of a salesperson as opposed right. to you've got to bring people in. You've got to bring people in underneath you. That, that is, is changing a bit. The other thing is, is because of technology, for instance, we're working with a company now, they're out of Malaysia. They've got an e-commerce site that is almost rivaling what Amazon can do. Wow. So it, and, and it's not like you've got to do, you know how they have the monthly auto ship? Mm-hmm. They don't have monthly auto ships anymore. So it's not like you've got to put this amount of money in every month and you've got to do, it's not that. It's what you sell. Mm-hmm. So I think what's, what's happening with a lot of people is they're going to move in a direction where they can't find a job. They're at home, right. but they got technology on social media. They can use that. The other thing absolutely. is absolutely yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, I was going to say absolutely because that's one of the things that I tell everyone constantly. I mean, I am a hundred percent self-taught. In this day and age, our biggest advantage when looking for a job is technology. We can find anything. Like you said, you found a Harvard bartending school for goodness' sake, right? <laughs> I found everything I needed to know about SEO, social media you know, e-commerce, websites, marketing, everything that I do every day. So there's no excuse for, you know, people saying, I don't have this big fancy education. I just have to do whatever. This isn't true anymore. Well, it's true. And then one step further on the network marketing is the thing about network marketing is, is it, it brings people together. It may be parties or meetings or something like that. And I'm thinking as the more I see, for instance, you know, you're seeing a lot of restaurants close, a lot of restaurant chains close. Right. Um, people sometimes are too much into their technology and they really need that human contact. And I, I think a, a network marketing setting would, would help with that. Now, no, that's a good point because we're very antisocial, right? We have become very antisocial. And we really, you know, we really, we need to be social. And especially as you get older, uh, you know, I think this is great for, for people who are, are retirement age. And again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not pushing network marketing on anybody. I, I, you know, I, I don't care one way or another. But I think people are going to start looking at it. And I think a lot of people are going to start finding Mm-hmm. Um, you know what, this, it's changing. It's, it's, it's not your daddy's network marketing company. Right. Uh, they're beginning to use, so for instance, the company that we're with, not only do they have e-commerce, uh, they mm-hmm. have travel, worldwide travel, so you can sell mm-hmm. travel. And on the e-commerce, you can then set up your own store so that you're getting all the stuff off their e-commerce at wholesale and you can resell it. So yeah. you can create your own, your own store that way. Without yep. even touching any of it? Correct. Yeah, that's you can, good. or you, or you don't yeah. have to, you can have them send it to you or you can, and then resend it, or you can have it yeah. go directly to them. Fulfillment centers. The yeah. third thing is cryptocurrency. They're, they they mm-hmm. have their own cryptocurrency. So you will have, you don't have to worry about, you know, changing currencies from one country to another. You can start, you know, bringing in other people. So mm-hmm. I'm, as I'm beginning to see what is happening in the world and, and the different what technologies is- that are happening, I think that's where a lot of it's going. Well, and it's happening so fast, right? I mean, I'm not a tech head, not really. I do it. I do it every day now. But I mean, even four years ago when I started my company to now, the technology is vastly different. And, um, and you know, maybe it's something that you were saying, you know, between technology helping and hindering us, we all need to kind of get in line to figure out what it's going to be and jump on that before, you know, that is gone and we're on to something else. Well, the, the good news is, 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 to, is to let people know that the technology is getting better because it's easier. So it, there are less barriers to entry. There are less, okay, I got to do this. I got to do this. No, just do this and you're in and, and find those technologies that can do that. And those are the ones you want to work with because those are the ones you can, you can sell to other people or use with other people. And right. technology is beginning to do that. I mean, I shoot a television show on the iPhone. Yeah, I'm let's, an idiot. let's talk I'm an about idiot that. when it comes to technology. And yet at the same time too, I shoot a show on the iPhone and I give people videos that go, wow, you did that off the iPhone? And they think I'm marvelous. I'm not marvelous. It's the iPhone that's marvelous. 
No, and I've seen um, Undercover Jet Setter, which mm -hmm. is fabulous. And can I come? Hello. Absolutely. I, I didn't oh, get absolutely. any bike. <laughs> Well, what we're, what we're trying to do, and one of the reasons with the book, and then the next, we've done two seasons of the show. The third season, we're going to try to set it up so that uh, people who learn how to shoot mm -hmm. um, the videos, they can be on the show. So, oh, very we're, so cool. we're going to take the concept that we had on Real TV, uh -huh. where the audience was sending in their great videos that they right. captured live action on tape. We're going to do the same thing with Undercover Jet Setter. So you can be a part of the show and send your stuff. And like, for instance, I got a good buddy of mine, he and his wife and his daughter just did this great trip to Italy and they had all this video. I'm going to sit down and interview them. I'm going to take their video and put it over it. So oh, you cool. can be part of our show at the same time too, while you're shooting great video for yourself. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to get more people involved and interactive in what they're doing. Oh, I love that. Okay. So, so one of the things that I love, I love travel. I don't get to do it as much as I'd like. I have three children <laughs> mm -hmm. and they don't fit in luggage very well, apparently. So. <laughs> um, yeah. So I have a thing where I really advocate travel for divorcees because I think travel does multiple things to you on multiple levels. It opens mm -hmm. your eyes to the rest of the world. It teaches you about other cultures. It exposes you to things that you might be absolutely crazy in love with and have no idea because you've never done it before. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's such a good thing and it's such a good opportunity to use divorce as a time to travel. So let's pretend that you are giving a divorcee advice. What three places out of everywhere you've been would you say would be like a really, really good eye opener and a good experience? Wow, three good places. Well, I would I would say the first thing to do is, is as long as you're okay being on the sea, I would do a cruise. Uh -huh. And um, I would find a cruise that is conducive to your personality. So, for instance, um, you know, if you like the warm weather, go to the Caribbean or you know mm -hmm. Hawaiian cruise. Um, you know, the Mediterranean would be worthwhile. That'd be gorgeous. Uh, if, if you're someone who, who likes kind of cold weather and Nordic type stuff, you, you know, an Alaskan cruise is a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and then a, um, you can do one up in the Baltics. So you, you end up like in a place like St. Petersburg or something like that, which would be really cool. So I, yeah, I they would, have those Viking cruises, don't they? The Viking cruises down the, uh, you know, down the, uh, the river cruises in Europe mm -hmm. are, are fabulous as well. Um, I would say just pick what interests you, especially maybe what you haven't found mm -hmm. out about before. So for instance, you know, I know, I know uh, a guy, he was a, he was a U.S. Senator and we ended up chatting and he was retiring from, uh, from the Senate. And he said, he goes, the one place I never went to was New Zealand and Australia. So he says, I did this four weeks in New Zealand and Australia with my wife. He goes, it's the greatest place in the world. He says, I, being Aww. a senator, I, I would think I only want to live in the United States. I would live there. And so, oh. you know, an eye opener there. So I, I don't know if I would say to people, these are the three places you should go. I think I would say, go on a cruise first. The second thing I would say is, don't go alone. Bring, bring a friend, not necessarily, uh, you know, a romantic friend. Bring, you know, mm. if women, bring your girlfriends. Um, mm. And enjoy enjoy the place that way. If yeah. you do go alone, um, it, you have to be a certain personality, I think, to go. On That's me. I went to Hong Kong by myself on a whim. And did you enjoy it? I did. I did. I thought I was crazy halfway there. I was thinking, good Lord, what am I doing? Now, how long ago was this? Um, this was uh, like two years ago. Two years ago. And um, now Hong Kong's, it, it, it's expensive, but at the same time too, for a single woman, and it's funny, my mother-in-law, who is, as she's in her 80s now, but she, she was there maybe about 20 years ago, and she said, she was a nurse, and she said to me, she goes, if I was a nurse and I was in my 20s, she says, I would literally drop everything. I would go find a nursing job in Hong Kong and live there for a short while and then go to other places. And I thought- And that's what I would have done. Yeah. So what did you what did you enjoy about Hong Kong? What was the, what was the thing that really grabbed you? Well, I think part of it is it was mental, right? So so I've always wanted to go somewhere in Asia, and I knew I'd be going by myself. So I'm a bit of a scaredy cat. So I was like, okay, what mm -hmm. would be kind of safe for a woman to go by herself? And mm -hmm. 
came up with Hong Kong. And I also had um, some friends from uh, my school, my high school lived there. And uh, so, so I kind of did it on a whim to see if I could, you know, like when you get divorced, you're like, oh, can I even go out and eat by myself? Can I go have a drink by myself? So I was like, what would be the ultimate for me, Hong Kong? So, so that's what I did. And when I got there and I, I absolutely loved it. I loved the people there, the places there, the scenery. I mean, I just found all of it. I mean, it was just so different than obviously America or Europe. Mm-hmm. And the food was amazing. Like, I really, I would have, if I did not have any children, I would have moved there too. Wow. And what we, what we found was um, when we were there and we, we, we did, we've done a couple episodes on Hong Kong and we, uh, we kind of said it's, it's a combination of New York City, Mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco, Sydney, Australia, and Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Where did that come in? <laughs> um, it just kind of the innovation and the um, uh, it's innovation. You know, it's kind of like you could, you could see a South by Southwest convention being in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah, um, kind of, yeah. You know, kind of liberal, but at the same time too innovative. You know, not not necessarily the Birkenstocks, but kind of the you know the the new progressive innovative type uh, liberal, and um, that to me is. Uh, and, and you have better tips on that because, I mean, I've traveled to places alone by myself, um, but I, I think for a woman, I think that's, 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 that's difficult. That's ballsy, to, so to speak. So I, well, I, think, you to, I think you, you have, have to, to be realized. Yeah. I mean, you have to be safe, obviously, clearly. I mean, I didn't do, you know, I wasn't going to dodgy areas, as we say in England, or do anything dodgy. Sure. And, um, and I think, you know, I, obviously there are a lot of areas in the world that you shouldn't go to as a woman by yourself. I think that would not be a good idea. But also there are a lot of other things. So you, you and I were talking a little bit earlier that you have a friend who does um, singles trips. I mean, if you look on the internet, there really are quite a lot of companies that cater mm-hmm. to single people. There's um, Backroads, which is one of them that does all bike trips all over Europe, all over the world, actually, for single people. There's, I'm sure, multiple others like your friends and, and uh, Dreams Recycled is in the process of starting one also. But, um, you know, you can find a way that you can kind of go by yourself, but with a group where it's safe and it's organized, if that's more your cup of tea, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, and I think, you know, and I, I, I tell everybody, you know, Google it. Uh, you'll you'll find something, and, and I think you're you're going to be a great resource because I think that's what a, a lot of people, you know, especially d- divorcees or people who are changing roles in their in their job are, are going to be looking for something like that, and that's mm-hmm. that's a good way to do it. One of the things when I when I wrote my book on on media bias, uh-huh. I said one of the best things you can do to overcome media bias is to travel. And when yeah. No, very, very good point. That's an excellent point. Yeah. When you go to another country, uh, you know, turn on the TV, watch yeah. TV news there. Um, and well, and yeah. someone says, oh, all I get is uh, CNN International. CNN International is a totally different <laughs> than well, regular this- CNN. I was going to say, and you also in America, you can download the BBC app (laughs) and watch BBC news. And you're you're not even sure you're on the same planet sometimes. You're like, this is going on. I'm on, you know, American news. I don't see any mention of all these people dying or whatever. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the other thing is, is that because one, cameras are everywhere, two, social media is everywhere. So you might just be getting stuff that's just in a specific area. It's not going to be out there. But I would, I would say the most important thing you can do is travel. As a citizen of the world, you owe it to yourself to, to go to places um, and, and get, if you can, get out of the tourist areas and go meet the people. I mean, that to me is, is the most important thing. And that is the fun thing to do. And you usually walk away changed. You will be walk, you will walk away changed. It's not going to change you in the sense that, Oh, my beliefs have changed. No, it's, it's going to be, you're just going to be richer for the experience that you have. And you're going to be a little bit more understanding. Uh, mm-hmm. what goes on. The other thing is, you know, being an American, I mean, the times that I've traveled overseas, I come back and I go, I am so happy I'm an American. I mean, I love well, going to foreign places. Well, and gratitude is the attitude, right? Clearly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that this is one of the biggest problems in the Western world is we, you know, we take so much for granted that other people struggle so hard for. 
Absolutely. And, and, you know, and this is one of the, one of the things about divorce too. We say you're like, okay, even if it's the worst divorce ever, you're still so much better off than, you know, a lot of the rest of the world. True. True. So, um, there's a, there's a great book um, that it ties into everything we're talking about here. And uh, I'm drawing a blank on the author, but it's the, it's called the subtle art of not giving a, uh, and use the four letter word. <laughs> Beginning with an F. Yes. <laughs> the F and, word. And uh, it's written by a young guy. I think he was only about, he's only about 20, 29, 30 when he wrote it. Mm-hmm. And um, he, and primarily what it is, is it, it, it's not so much being, you know, I don't give up. No, it, it's, it's finding the purpose in life and really mm-hmm. focusing on that. And it's getting, getting rid of all, all the nonsense that that's out there or the, the, the chaos that's out there. And one of the things that he, he, he mentions that articulated it for me really, really well was, you know, if you have a goal in life, like I want to be the best, I want to be the most popular and wealthiest rock star in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Okay. But go find out what the process is. Mm -hmm. Will you like the process of doing that? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be up there on stage and banging out tunes and, you know, having women fall all over me. And yet at the same time too, what do what do I need to do? And if I do it, am I compromising myself? And so he, he talks about finding, enjoying the means of what you're doing. And mm-hmm. so that, that clarified a lot to me. Like I, I enjoy putting together videos. I enjoy putting together shows. Uh, I, I don't enjoy talking to somebody about their financials and their retirement plan. That's just not me. So mm-hmm. I, I understood. I don't enjoy that. Here's what mm-hmm. I do. And I well, and life, that's and the life, important thing. And life is short to have a job that you don't enjoy. It's a ridiculous amount of hours of your life spent doing it. So if you're not enjoying it, why are you doing it? And um, and going back to something you said earlier, you know, about tapping into the things that you you naturally are good at. And so I have a lot of conversations with people, and they go, "I'm not good at anything." But then when you because you know, we don't have the fancy Harvard degree or we don't have whatever. So they automatically think they're not good at anything. But when you really start to talk to them and coach them through it, they're actually really good at a lot of things, things that actually can be turned into entrepreneurialism or, you know, marketing or whatever it is, or, you know, a lady I was talking to, uh, the only thing she's good at is making toffee which God bless her and her toffee, right? <laughs> but she's very good at it and she's made this whole business out of it and God bless her because you don't have to be good at everything. You only need to be good at one thing, really, mm-hmm. don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I, I th- I think a lot of us, uh, and, and I'm going to say in the United States, because I see it and I see it with our lawmakers and I see it with a lot of people, we, we're wound collectors. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we sit there and, and, and collect how we've been affronted and how someone has hurt us. And it's like, so you just sit there and you just brood over it. Mm-hmm. And, and um, to me... We're professional victims. Is that what you kind yeah, of mean? Yeah. I call it wound collecting. <laughs> um, and I've, 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 I've done a couple of columns on this. Yeah. Uh, that's a good term. But I, I, what I always, you know, not that I instruct people, but I always tell people, just go do something. Don't worry about it. Because one of the things, you know, and I used to always tell kids, like when I was a news anchor and I had to go speak to high schools and, and different colleges, and I would say, go find out what you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And, and how do you do that? You go and you do things and you fail. Or it's like, I don't like that. Okay, well, you found out you didn't like it. At least you were doing something. But you may have found a skill or you may have found something you like doing connected to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Well, and that's, that's a very good point and very good home truth too, right? When you learn what you don't want to do, you're more definite on what you do want to do. And sometimes even bits of what you don't want to do come in very, very handy later on. Like my part of my story is I have a degree in history, which I hated. Hmm. which is like, and it's not very handy. Like, what do you do with that? I don't want to be a teacher. I don't like history. I don't want to do any of that. But it's actually come into play that I'm actually a pretty good writer from doing that. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I became a Huffington Post blogger and author and all the rest of it. So you can take little bits and pieces, even things you don't really like, and use them in your next life in some other way that's more helpful to you. Yeah, no, exactly. I'd be very helpful for travel too. I mean, you could you could create these travel um, tours and use your history on that. I mean, that's that's exactly yeah. what you would do something with that. So it's 
it's, it's keep moving forward. Don't sit there and brood. Mm-hmm. Sure, every, everybody has things that go wrong for them. And as long as you're out there doing something, and say, well, I can't think of it. Well, go do some charity work. Go, go help somebody. If you can help somebody, that will make you feel so much better. And even if it's like, okay, I don't want to be doing it. Okay, you don't, but just go do it. And at least mm-hmm. you're going to find something. And that's the thing is that we, we, too many of us, and especially this is what's bad about technology, we sit on our butts watching entertainment, watching our phones, waiting for something to happen, go out there. Go out there and just keep moving forward. And if you move forward, you're going to change and adapt and things are going to start happening for you. One of the great things, Ben Hogan, I'm a big golf fan. Ben Hogan <laughs> said, ben Hogan said he, says, uh, he says, I'm not lucky. He says, but he says, I noticed, he says, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Yeah, and that is a brilliant, brilliant saying. And so much truth to that, right? Well, John, thank you so, so much for coming on our show today. You've been delightful. Tiffany, thank you. Yeah, very informative. So just to wrap up, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, TV Studio in Your Hand, um, how this can help us, any budding wannabe reality show peoples. How do, how do they get that and how do they get hold of you generally? Well, the uh, best way to get the book, you can get the book on Amazon. Uh, and again, it's a TV studio in your hand. And uh, my uh, co-anchor and co-producer, uh, Susan Anzalone, co-wrote it with me. So you can get it under either of our names. Um, and you can get it on Amazon. Or you can go to um, our website. This is the show's website. And it's undercoverjetsetter.com. And you can see the book there, get the book there. Um, you can also see our blog. Uh, we also have some great recipes for drinks and, and stuff like that. So you can, you can see a lot there. And then uh, the, other, the other site I would send folks to is if you're more uh, politically, economically minded, I, I write a lot on what's going on, especially in the media and how to decipher what's going on, mm-hmm. uh, called informednotinflamed.com. Awesome. So listeners, check out John Daly on all his uh, avenues and definitely get his book. I highly recommend it. It's actually really, really good. Um, And one last thing, and I'm going to put you on the spot right now. So I'm going to ask you a favor. After you get off the phone, can you make us the ultimate divorcee cocktail? Oh, oh, that's a good one. Okay. Yes, I, I will. I will, I will come okay. up with that. Uh, you know, I am a graduate of Harvard, you know, I, and, know. Uh, I can, uh, yeah, let me work on that. I, okay. will, I will get one for you. Okay. We'll come back to you. We'll post, we'll also go ahead. And when we get this out, we will post it along with John Daly's ultimate divorcee cocktail. So thank you very much. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back another day.